Wait. Did I see what? Did you see this Nike Ajax with the launcher? How did you know that was a Nike Ajax? <laughs> Everybody knows <laughs> this is a Nike Ajax with a launcher. What is it? What does it do? It Ajax. <laughs> it Ajax. <laughs> So Jenny, what's this one over here? <laughs> it's it's a coffee filter for <laughs> giants. <laughs> Why is it at the Air and Space or, Museum? Because it's a rocket engine, Dan. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I know so much more about this stuff than you do. Oh yeah. Come on. What kind of a rocket engine is it? It's the F1. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm Jenny. We ditched the corporate world to spend a year exploring. And our goal is to get out and see all the incredible places and meet interesting people. And maybe find a place to put roots down. So join us as we explore both on and off the beaten path. Sometimes we'll be somewhere. And sometimes nowhere. All right, well, hello everybody. We are coming to you right now from icy, freezing, cold Carlsbad, New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> As we had mentioned previously, I promised Jimmy that every three to five days or so we'd get an Airbnb or a hotel. Um, we actually found a really nice Airbnb in Carlsbad and we've been hunkered down here for a couple days. Did a total uh, rest and refit, washed everything inside and out. And now we've got a little bit of a plan for the next couple of days, general direction. So we'll do our map talk here and I've got uh, our trusty new little pointer here. So Jenny, why don't you come on in? <laughs> So right now we're in Carlsbad, and we're gonna make our way down here to Carlsbad Caverns. You have to have an appointment to do a self-tour, so we've got that at about 10.30. I'm figuring we're gonna spend a couple hours in here, maybe go for a hike, uh, and then from there, uh, we're gonna see what happens. Down below White City here, there's BLM land uh, and some campsites that, that we were looking at. Um, we're gonna sort of see what the weather does. We're gonna watch the wind all day and see it's supposed to come from the southeast so that might be exposed. So our, our alternative will be to make our way back north and then come west into Lincoln National Forest. Uh, Lincoln National Forest has a ton of uh, campsites that, that we've seen. Uh, it also looks like you might be able to get into a little bit of cover in here. So that's gonna be our plan for the day and we will adjust accordingly. So. Hope you uh, enjoy the ride. And are we going to use that, that little pointer thing to make some s'mores tonight, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know what this thing is. I think it's a s'mores cooker. A s'mores cooker? Yeah, I think it's a s'mores Well, it's cooker. got a little prong on it. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what it's for. I've always wanted s'mores. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, campsite. Thank you, campsite. Thank you for all your warm temperatures and your washing machine. A lots, I, I, a lots of washing machines. And your big king bed. Your big king bed. And warm showers. And Dan smells good. I do smell good. So do you. Yes. I and love you. your kitchen where we cook some good yes. food. Yes. What else? That's it. That's it. Let's go to Carl's Bad Cavern. All right. Thank you, Campsite. Thank you, Campsite. <laughs> what oh. is that? Oh, you didn't see me there? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Yeah, we're going there. You go down 75 stories.
so cool. That was really cool. Although we can't see the drive up to it, so it is <laughs> 30 degrees out, frozen fog, everything is completely frozen. All the plants are nuts, but actually it was just the ideal day for a cavern walk. It's what, 56 degrees yeah. in there year round. So it was actually really warm. It was warm in there. I don't even know how you really describe the caverns. So I didn't look them up before we went just because I wanted to be surprised. And yeah. I was surprised. I didn't realize it was going to be that big. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah, the big room really was a big room. It was a big room. <laughs> a plus to the lighting. To the lighting light, crew? The lighting director gets yeah. an A plus because I will say they, they did, I mean, literally every turn was something just absolutely beautiful and different. Yeah, and the way it uh, works is you can walk in or you can take an elevator in. We obviously walked in. Walking in is the longest route. It's what, two and a half miles or yep. something like that? I think, Easy. I think they said. Basically straight down. <laughs> All pathway, yeah, you drop right down in. And then once you're in the caverns, they actually have a couple different shorter walks. So if you, if you aren't up for the two and a half miles, there's some shorter ones that you can just jump out. And then once you get to the very end, there's an elevator to, to bring you back up. So it's pretty leisurely, but really nice. And oh, another thing they did really well is you have to book a specific time. So what's nice about the reservations are they limit the amount of people going into the cave at the, that time. There was a few times that we were bunched up with other people, but other than that, we kind of were able to distance ourselves pretty well. Nice a plus peaceful. for me. Yeah, I, a plus I, for me too. That's a definite that I would put I would tell anybody to put that on their list. Definitely. It's like one of those things you, you can't not do if you're out here. You yeah. You have to. Yep. You have it to. takes about two and a half hours or so yes. to do the walk. So with the caverns behind us, it is now midday and we've got to think about a campsite tonight. We were going to try sticking around the Carlsbad area on BLM land, but it's looking like the wind forecast is pretty rough. So I think we may just double back through Carlsbad and check out Lincoln National Forest. Hopefully we can get into some trees and that sort of a thing, which will knock any of the wind down a little bit. Or we're going to Ritz-Carlton. Yeah, or we're <laughs> gonna go to the Ritz. All right, see you guys at the next turn. All right, well, here we are at camp. Yay! <laughs> little drama in getting here. So we were, uh, last you guys saw us, we were leaving Carlsbad Caverns and we had chose a place for the night. We started going towards it and Jenny got a severe weather report. <laughs> a winter weather winter warning. Weather winter weather warning. Of freezing rain. So she hit I Overlander, and Gaia. 50 weather. 50 weather <laughs> websites. Channels, yeah. And found uh, this really cool spot. Where is it near Lincoln, New Mexico? We're in Lincoln, New Mexico, right near Capitan. And it's, what is it, it's 59? It's 58, 59 degrees. I mean, it's going to get cold tonight. Blue skies, as you can see behind us. Yeah. Just complete opposite. Awesome job, Jenny. Good Thanks, job. Dan. I love Good you. Good job finding our site. Woo. So I think we're just going to uh, get the site oh. ready here. Oh, the, I got it. <laughs> the wind is gusting. It's supposed to drop here in a little bit. but. So we are going to get camp set up here. We'll make some dinner and maybe we'll see you guys a little later or in the morning. morning from frozen New Mexico. Got down to about 18 last night. As you can probably see, I'm taking a walk around the woods here. Frozen fog settled in, which is actually making it really, really pretty. So our plans all across southeastern New Mexico, there's basically an Arctic cold that is uh, settled in. So our choices are either we break camp today, go get a hotel or an Airbnb for the next couple of nights, or we just kind of waited out. Given that we just spent the weekend in Carlsbad, we don't really need to refit or anything like that. We're all stocked up, you know, showered up, that sort of a thing. So I think we're gonna opt just to settle in. We're in a really cool spot, plenty of wood around. So I think the plan is gonna be hunker down this morning, probably get some firewood going, and then spend the next couple of days here 
It doesn't look like there's any official trails or hikes, but it looks like there's a few places that we can go and stretch the legs and do that sort of a thing. Oh my God, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's a, there's a coyote just in the side of my campsite. Hang on. Oh! <laughs> it's warm. This hat is warm. It might look stupid, but it's warm. And I think this is going to be about our speed for the day is shake off the frozen fog and uh, go for some walks. In the words of Tyler Childers, shake the frost. <laughs> What's that called? <laughs> Anyways, so I think that's going to be our speed for the day. We'll check in at some point with you, hopefully with something interesting for y'all. See ya. The day has turned for the better for us. Yay! It's uh, a heat wave. We got, what, 35 degrees, Jenny? Yes. So it 35 is- 35 and sunny. So it is toasty. <laughs> Couple cool things have happened. So last <laughs> night as we were going to bed, we could see all the uh, fighter jets and all their lights on, doing maneuvers, that sort of thing. It was really neat. You could hear them. And then probably about 10 minutes ago, <laughs> <laughs> we we just about shit our pants. We had one that must have been real damn close and it broke the sound barrier because it just... Two bombs. It yeah. felt like two bombs were just yeah. dropped. Yeah, it was just like... Uh, was it, it was so loud if you've never heard it. Anyway, so that got the heart going. Ooh. We're just gonna take ourselves That's a little a walk. Just explore. There's no real trails where our campsite is. Um, but we're gonna just kind of get the blood up a little bit, take a quick height and and explore the uh, beautiful forest here. Here comes another jet. Here comes another jet. Ooh. <laughs> you nervous, Jenny? Yes. <laughs> place that we're located is near a formal forest service campground called Baca, B-A-C-A. -A. And uh, there's pit it's toilets free. and that sort of thing. It's free. So there's a bunch of RVers and stuff like that there. Nice little spot. But what we did is there's actually a bunch of roads that just lead off from there, not in the campground. Quite a few of them are really, really cool. Yeah. Nice fire rings, they'll be under a uh, lot. trees. Some of them are actually pretty secluded and you can get out and away from it. So if anybody is coming here, we would recommend that you don't stay at the formal campground, but you just kind of come out because like, yeah. take a look behind us. There's, there's a big fire ring. Yeah, a big fire ring, spot plenty all by wood. yourself. Been oh of yeah, good. Good point, Jenny. Yeah, so tons of wood. Oh, oh and we think we, we heard Mexican wolves. Oh! Like, literally, last night and today. So this morning, we heard coyotes. Yeah. And coyotes were, we've heard them all the time, camping and that sort of thing. So it's nothing new there and the, you know, the real distinctive yips that you hear. And then this morning, it was going on and on. And it was not little yips. And then uh, Jenny did some research and uh, found there are actually 
Mexican wolves. It's what, a subspecies of the gray wolf. Yep. And they have kind of been reintroduced and been moving up from Mexico. So yeah. I, think, I think it must have been wolves. Cool discovery so far. We're on the dinner list tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoever can run faster isn't. Yeah. Woo. You want to race? Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, good morning. Thank you, campsite. Thank you, campsite. Uh, what a good campsite this was. It's on USDA land. Yeah, we found that out yesterday. Yeah, which we learned, which means you could stay up to 30 days, I think. 30 days. Yep. But uh, let's see, that temp dropped last night. Dropped fast. It is cold. <clears throat> it is cold. It's so really cold. we got to be low to mid 20s or so. Plan for the day, we've got the Jeep warming up over there. We're going to hit the road and go to Fort Stanton, which is apparently a pretty cool historical site here in New Mexico. So we're going to check that out. Then probably make our way over into some higher elevations to, to just see what we can see. Maybe the uh, New Mexico backcountry discovery route down to Alamogordo, I think, is going to be the... Marsubal. <laughs> yeah, down to... <laughs> <laughs> down to Marsupial. Armadillo. Armadillo? <laughs> Okay, next time you see us, we might be in Almogordo, Armiadilio, or Marius, <laughs> or Mariusupio. <laughs> Good evening, everybody from New Mexico. We've uh, found a spot here backed up to the mountains, as you can see right here. We got the uh, sunset right behind us. I'll see if that, I don't know if that's gonna pick it up or not, it might not, but uh, really cool day. We started off going to Fort Stanton, which has been a fort and an outpost for a long time back from pre-Civil War days. It was actually initiated to, to help protect settlers from the Apaches uh, in the area. Then it was taken over by the Confederacy and uh, then abandoned for a while and uh, has had multiple uses. There was also a really, really cool old cemetery, veteran cemetery that we stopped at and it was really, really well done. We then made our way through the mountains and stopped at a Apache museum and spent, boy, it must have been an hour talking to the gentleman there about the history of this one Apache tribe. It was just absolutely cool. So neat hearing about how the Apaches fought essentially multiple enemies. It started with the Spanish, then turned into the Mexicans, then it was other Indians, then it was the United States government, but what a rich sort of history and strong culture. I was also happy to hear that a lot of the younger generation Apache are actually starting to really embrace the culture, learn the language so that that stuff doesn't get lost. And they're also documenting a lot of things that haven't been documented before. So just a really cool day. We spent a couple hours on BLM land trying to find a good site for tonight. Finally landed here. I think this is gonna be a good one. To our west, we've got an Air Force base, and uh, we're a lot closer to it than we were the last couple of nights. So we're fully expecting to hear them taking off and flying overhead and everything for the evening. So I think that'll be the wrap up for the day. And uh, tomorrow, we've still got to figure out what we're gonna do. White Sands National Park is near us. That's definitely on the list to check out. There's also a couple uh, space, there's a space museum in uh, Alamogordo that is supposed to be pretty cool. So I want to be sure to check that out and then who the heck knows what else we'll find. So anyway, we'll, we'll uh, see you back next time. Good morning. It's uh, just before sunrise on 
Um, I think it's Thursday. Uh, another cold one last night uh, in the 20s or so. I don't know if you can see the sunrise hitting the mountains behind us in the 20s, but we got all bundled up and we were cozy as usual in the Ursa. Got that thing all zipped up, so that was nice. And had dreams of Apache Indians all night last night. It was such a cool thing going to that cultural center and learning about the uh, Muscalera Apache, which is different than the Chiricahua Apache. Chiricahua Apache were the ones that, that people would know from the Geronimo era. Mescalera were close and similarly related, but covered different areas. And I guess they were a little bit more elusive. They didn't like telling their stories. I heard a few of them yesterday at the cultural center, but pretty cool. So with that in mind, we will explore more today of the back country here. I think we're gonna have a look at uh, White Sands National Park. Go check that out today and uh, maybe do some hiking over there. And then, and then probably take the weekend in Alamogordo, grab a hotel room, do some laundry, stock up, and, and then hit the reset button for where we're gonna go Sunday and next week, which is probably Gila. I've been dying to go there ever since I saw it. So um, anyway, that's the plan for the day. Not sure when we'll see you, but we'll see you. Okay, well, we're off to White Sands, but before that, Thank you, campsite. 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 Thank you for keeping us warm. And thank you, mountains, for keeping us not windy. And thank you for the uh, awesome sunset. And the awesome homemade chili that Jenny made. And the homemade chili. And thank you for all the aerobatics and the flares that we got to see. Oh, yeah, that was cool. That was so cool. Yeah. What else? Um, that's it. Thank you, campsite. Thank you, campsite. So, here at White Sands National Monument. Yay! I guess it's the biggest gypsum dunes in the world, right? Yep. There's a few different hikes. There's a one miler, a two, and a five. We're gonna do the two. Yeah, so that's the plan for the day. Watch, watch this, I'm gonna run up. Climb some fight. dunes. <laughs> I love it. Walking on the moon here. So I love it when random, or maybe not so random things, make connections. And one of the things we learned is that even though these look like barren sand dunes, the water table is just below this. So while a lot of early settlers thought this was a wasteland. The Mescalero Apache uh, were able to thrive here because they would dig down at night into the sand, not very far. By morning, it would be filled with water because the water table is so close, so. All right, so wrap up of the two mile hike. That was fun. I think it's about perfect. Oh, so really fun. You can rent little saucers and the people are out here sledding down the uh, sides of the dunes. So I'd say if you come do that and then yeah. bring a bottle of water. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. And oh, definitely and, bring a bandana. Yeah, bandana, buff. schmeg, schmog, buff, whatever.
that was pretty cool. I actually had no idea New Mexico had so much history with the space program. No, I didn't either. It's pretty neat. You walk around, you get to see engines, you get to see rockets, missiles. They have a flight simulator where you can control the space shuttle and Jenny took it and did this. <laughs> It was broken. It was broken. So too. Definitely a cool visit. Super cool. Something to try if you're in the area. Yep. What do you think? Half an hour? You probably spend yeah, half, half hour. Like it's that. like seven, eight bucks a person yeah. per adult. Yeah. Cool. So I think we'll wrap things up here today. What a great week. Awesome week. Also kind of interesting. We started the week deep in the cavern and we ended it in outer space here. All right. Well, we're not sure where we're going next week. We've got to go back to the hotel, wash up do a little bit of cocktail contemplation cocktail on, contemplation. Yep, <laughs> on which way we're headed. So yes. thank you guys for watching this. As we always say, if you enjoyed it, we'd love you to like it and follow us along. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Wait, hold on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a space. What? Take me to your leader. <laughs> Star Trek or something, isn't it? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take Jenny to the leader now. <laughs>